In this video, I want to give a quick walkthrough on setting up the time manipulation ability system in a new project. So first, first things first, um, to make, you want to make sure that the plugin is enabled. So we'll go to the plugins and go under game features. I've already imported the plugin into this project, but you see here it should art automatically be enabled. Um, one thing to note is with this plugin, under here, it lists the um, dependencies. So you'll see that the gameplay ability system is a dependency of this plugin. So once it's installed, it should automatically um, load that plugin as well. But you may have to restart your project um, when that once you do that. So I've already got that enabled on this project. Um, so let's let's go ahead and jump into the third person character. I'm using the third person character um, template project for this, um, but this plugin should work with any project really you can add it to any any actor since it's uh, implemented as an actor component all right so bring up your third person character we'll go in here and first things first we want to add the an ability system to our actor and we'll just leave the name as default and then we'll also want to add our time manipulation so we'll search for time and there it is add that this is our actor component um, so this is what we'll use to actually make calls to control the time all right so in order to actually enable the system we have to grant this character or actor this time manipulation ability so we'll first drag in a reference to our ability system i'm going to just go ahead and add this up here on begin play and then, yeah, that should be fine. We'll do add ability, I believe. Or give ability, that's what it is. So give ability, <clears throat> and then we'll select our time manipulation ability option here. And we'll just connect that right there. That is all you need to do to give this character or actor the ability to control time. And then next thing you need to do is we have to add the ability to actually um, cause the effect. So we need a way to give input to this character. So I'm not going to um, tie into the input system. I'm going to just use a keyboard control for now, just for the sake of demonstration. Once you use T, since it's for time. T. All right. And I'm going to do two things here. So first, I want to, we're going to actually <coughs> get all the abilities that this character has. And we're going to print that to, to, to screen to make sure that, um, just as a uh, debug step, to make sure that our ability is actually being added to this player. So we'll drag, actually, we'll, we'll first get the ability system again. Let's just copy this one. We'll do get all abilities. And then I'll give us an array. Right now there's there should only be one. So we'll just get a reference to the first one. This is just kind of to show how you can check and debug whether your system is actually working properly. this all right and then we'll add a print string and we'll just tie that in all right so let's compile and save let's go back to the level view and then let's just go ahead and play our level and see so we're going to hit t and nothing was printed Uh, we missed something here. So we just also have to attach what reference to the ability system that we're using. So now we can compile and save. And let's try again here. Let's see. Yep, there we go. So now we see that our ability system has been added to our player character. And nothing's happening just yet because we haven't actually made a call to the into the ability system component. So in order to do that, well, I'll leave the, the print string here, but we're going to go ahead and 
get another reference to the ability system, and then we'll call the try activate ability. Let's use by class. What this one do? Yeah, let's let's do that. It's a little more more organized. Let's create a variable here. Just for the sake of demonstration, because in the future you might be adding multiple abilities, um, so you might need a reference to those abilities systems. But you can also get those just by class. Um, but for the sake of this demonstration, I'll use the reference to our our actual ability to activate here. So we'll drag that and drop it right there. So that'll give us a reference to the ability that we want to activate. <clears throat> and that is all you need to do to actually enable this ability. So we'll compile and save. Let's see what that looks like when we hit play. So we're running around and we'll hit that. And now you see time is slowed and we hit it again to set time back. So now we, we have the time dilation enabled, but if you notice that the time is actually being affected for our character as well, <clears throat> and if that's what you're looking for, that's fine. But I'm going to just show a quick way you can actually um, exclude our, our character from the time dilation. And I'm going to use just use event tick for this. Let's see. Not recommended, but for the sake of demonstration, once again, we'll, we'll just um, implement this quickly. So we'll add a branch node here. And then we want to get the global time dilation. Right. Okay. And so what we want to do is we want to basically, if, if it's less than one, then we want to increase the, the speed for our character. That way the, the, time dilation balances out. So I'm going to duplicate this. <clears throat> and there is a property for the actors called custom time dilation that we can actually access. We're going to do set. So this is, is relative to the global time dilation. Um, but essentially what this allows us to do is it it's letting us set the, the time dilation for this actor alone. So we'll set this, let's set it to maybe a value of 10. So if, if time is being controlled, we're gonna take our character out of that control and lock, lock them back to essentially almost normal time. And then otherwise we'll set it back to one. That should give us Actually, we'll set it back to the time dilation. I think that's that will make more sense. Whatever the time dilation value is, because if you're you are increasing time, you might want to have have this set back to the increased time. And you, you can you know improve upon the logic, but this is just a way to kind of show how you can um, start using the system and modifying the the abilities. All right, so we have our our scaffolding logic here to kind of pull our character out of the time dilation i'm worried i uh, really adjust it adjust our character to the the global time dilation um, so one last thing to to modify here is we want to make sure that so I, I set this value to 10. Um, we're going to go here and adjust the time dilation factor right now it's, it's set to half time we're going to just drop this down to like 0.1 or something and then you there's other other settings you can adjust here um, but for now, we just need to adjust the time dilation factor. This is kind of, you probably don't want to go any lower than 0.1. Setting to zero, I don't think we'll have an impact, but 0.1 should be, is essentially almost stopping time. So we'll do that. And then we have this set to 10. That factor should set us back to normal time for the character. So compile and save if you haven't. I won't go to play an editor. And now you see that when I enable the ability, 
it's not impacting the character. So if if these these actors were falling, let's go ahead and demonstrate that. I'm gonna grab these blue cubes, drag them up into the air. Then, oh, there we go. Now you see the, the time slow is slow for the cubes, but I'm able to, to keep running around at normal time or normal speed. And that, that pretty much demonstrates how to integrate the system into your, your a new project. Um, you follow the same steps for an existing project as well. Um, and obviously the, the logic we have here is, is pretty basic just to get the system enabled and working in your, in your actor. Um, and just to show a quick way to kind of um, customize how the time is effect impacts your player character.